Hello there, Obi here. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys today about commands and how to run them. Before we get started, let's set a few things straight. I am not at all reinventing the wheel. I know that this is discussed in other places. I just wanted to put it all in one place in a video format. If you're going to do any kind of commands or anything like that, you're going to want to make sure that you can access Township's website, Tavern, because we're going to be doing everything in console. So before you begin, make sure you can do that. Make sure you can log in. If you can't, you need to click the forgot button, uh, password button, uh, open a ticket, something like that. Next step is sign up or get invited to the ATT Meta Discord. If you have any questions related to commands, that is the place to ask. Not in my DMs. I've, I've kind of talked about that before. Um, you could probably ask below, but it's going to be faster if you just go to the ATT Meta Discord and ask there. It also helps if you use the search bar, because I'm pretty sure your question has probably been asked already. Also, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to discuss here has been documented by Hazy in Hazy's University. When I first started out, I used one of his guides, like the dashboard helper. I can't remember what it was called then, but that is like fundamental. It's a foundation for all admins or server owners if you want to know how to run commands and do commands well and properly. Another thing that you're going to want is a copy of CJ's item list. It's kind of overwhelming the first time you get it, but just take a couple minutes to, to, to read each tab um, so you can know like how to do some things. There's the items, the items with pictures, and then there's the textures. The textures are very, very important because it's good to know what they're called in the code. Okay. And then kind of a word of warning. Now, when you, when you uh, access Tavern and you turn on your console, it might give you a warning and say, like, Alta will not provide help or support or something like that. Maybe that's true in some cases, but I haven't found that to be true in my case personally, but I cannot speak for Alta. So just remember that. The other thing is common sense goes a long way when doing commands. Changing server settings can be dangerous, so be careful. Don't do it unless you know what you're doing. Don't spawn too many items in, because that can also destroy a server. So, like, we'll talk about that later, but just be careful. Use a lot of common sense. Don't spawn in more than you need. Don't screw around with, like, with, like, time settings. I'm not talking about time set, which we'll, we're going to talk about first, but... But like, like tick speed and stuff like that, don't mess with it. Just, it's just better to not mess with it. You don't want to ruin your server. Okay? So, a lot of things can be undone. A lot of things can be fixed, but not everything. So, use caution. Oh, and one more thing. You don't have to watch this whole video. You can look in the description, first of all, for helpful links, and also for timestamps. So you can skip around to different topics, whatever suits you. Thanks. Let's get started. Okay, so it's nighttime, and I can barely see the hands in front of my face, and I want to make it daytime. So a lot of times, when we talk about commands, we got to think about the logic of the names. So we want to set the time. And so that is just time set. So we're going to do time set commands. Now, it's nighttime and I want to make it day, so we could do time set day. And so the sun goes down over there and it's going to come up over here. There we go. And I know that day in game is also noon or 12. So time set 12, time set noon. So the ATT hours are based on a 24 hour clock. So North Americans will say like military time. So like 1 p.m. is 13, um, 11 p.m. is 23. So 
let's do this again. Let's do time set night. And I know that that's going to be midnight. And what happens is the sun is going to is do the revolution that way. It's never going to go backwards. Okay, so now it's nighttime. So a lot of players will usually complain when you, you make it day too fast. You know, it's too much of a difference. So one thing that you can do is like time set and we'll do like five. So for 5 a.m. We'll come up over here and watch the sunrise together. Here it comes. See, it's just over the horizon and it's gonna come up pretty quickly. But this way, players won't complain about like the time shift too much. So it's not too bright too fast. So, you know, um, if you want the most amount of daylight, I would say like 6.5 or seven. So the sun's like right here and you'll have the most amount of daylight for your players. A lot of people are here for the same thing. They want to learn how to spawn things in, and that's what we're going to talk about. Now, this is a quest-specific tutorial, so I'm not going to talk about spawning items in. On the PC servers, uh, or on PC version, you can spawn items in, meaning they will drop out of the sky in front of you. You can spawn in strings and all that other stuff. You can't do that on quest. It's not possible. But what we can do is we can have items come to our mailbox, or post box so we're doing trade post commands so that's what we're going to be working on so everything here is going to start out with trade post and then the person you want to be uh to receive the items so the recipient so in this case i want them to come to me so trade post and then my name now if we look through cj's items list Sometimes things have like weird names, like if you look for the name of like buckles and like, you know, hard metal bits or whatever. Um, but sometimes it's simple, like a stick is a stick. And I can do trade post my name and then stick. And we wait a few seconds. Come on, there we go. And out pops. <laughs> There we go. Out pops a stick. Just for us. Our own very cool stick, right? Ah, uh, yeah, it's very basic. Now, what if I want, like... What if I want, like, a purple stick? So, the purple metal is called Valian. I've talked about it before. Well, in the code, it's not called Valian. Players call it Valian, but in the code, it's called Evanon Steel Alloy. This is why CJ's items list the textures tab is very very important get to know those texture names so let's say that I want that stick but I want I want it purple stick and then Evanon steel alloy and let's say the quantity so let's talk about that too so I'm now typing in trade post my name and then a stick because I want a stick and now I want the texture. So like I said, purple, Valian, right? The, the, the texture name is Evanon Steel Alloy. And now I want more than one. I want 10 of them. So now I put in my quantity. So I'm hitting enter right now and let's see what happens. There we go. <laughs> so it helps if you spell it right. So look at that, we have a pouch full of sticks, purple sticks. They are Valian textured sticks. And we're gonna set those right here for right now. Okay, now you guys are not here because of sticks. You guys are here because you want a katana, right? Let's talk about weapons and tools because those items can be forged and that's the next step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh, CJ's item list and I'm gonna look for a katana blade and I know that the katana blade is called metal hebeus katana blade it's very very important that well it's not important this is a preference you can either put in the 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 number like 17174 I can't remember the code you can put in that code number or you can put in the name I recommend learning the name because it's easier to remember Metal Hebeus Katana Blade than it is to remember 
four or five or six numbers, right? Well, maybe for me. Okay, so trade post, username, like always, the item that we want. And so if we hit enter, it'll come out probably in copper. That's my guess. So a lot of things will have like a base texture. Um, so if we forget to put it, it's gonna be a katana that's copper and it's not forged. That's not what we want. So we want a purple one. We want a Valium textured blade. So we'll put in that Evanon steel alloy. And do we want it forged? Probably. So now we can type in forged at the end. If you don't put forged, it just comes out unforged. All right, so here comes, there it is. So that pops out there. Sometimes you gotta do a spin. I don't know why, but it works. And look at that. We have a katana blade and it's forged. It's ready to go onto a handle. So if we were to spawn in a katana handle right now, you need to understand that it cannot be textured. So if you try to texture it and it comes out not textured, that means either you did it wrong or it can't be textured. So I know that a handle cannot be textured. So we're gonna leave that there and we're gonna go to one more thing. Let's do, for example, a bag. Um, and leather bag is on the list. It's just bag, so trade, post, my name, and then bag. So when I talked about, um, when I talked about things like quantity, if an item doesn't stack, so for example, I know katana blades don't stack. I know that bags don't stack. Like you cannot put them, you cannot put them in a pouch, right? So if you can't put them in a pouch, then the quantity doesn't matter. You can put quantity 200 and you're still only gonna get one. So, and the same thing works with bots like Zesty, for example. Okay. Okay, so we've all done it before. We've spawned in an item that isn't forged. No big deal. Throw it on the ground, hold it, put it in your bag. It doesn't matter. What we can do is run progress, forge all, and sit back and watch the magic happen. It's forged. Let's talk about the bright pink elephant in the room. And that is a texture known as tin. You can also spawn in an item called aluminum, and it's the same texture. So in Unity, when a texture doesn't exist, it's this bright pink color that's... I don't know. Look, I would say that this item, this texture is very polarizing. People either love it or they hate it. I'm okay with it, but I don't use it. Um, this item can lag your server. So a lot of times you'll join servers and only admins are allowed to have it. So on my, on my server, we only allow admins to use it as like a way to show that they're an admin because when it's in their belt, right, it's quite bright and they can, and people can tell like, oh yeah, that's an admin. So this is tin. Just remember people will hate you for having it. <laughs> um, don't do too much of it. That's, that's opinion. Moving on. Okay, so let's say that you've run around the server and you have cleaned up players' messes and now you've got pouches full of junk and you want to get rid of them. Let's talk about wacky destroy commands. First, we're going to talk about wacky destroy free and how it works. So free refers to anything that is free, meaning it's not in inventory or it's not being held. So this is not free. This is free. These items are not free. These are free. So let's start first with these pouches, right? So like I said, sometimes things are called what you think they should be. So this is a pouch. So this is what we want to delete pouch not pouches pouch so what we will do 
is wacky, destroy, free, and then pouch. And I want to talk about why this could be dangerous. There we go. Poof. They're gone. So the way that Wacky Destroy works is any loaded chunk, those items will be, they will poof, they'll go vanish, right? And they're gone. So let's say that your friends are over at Blacksmith and they have pouches on the ground and you do Wacky Destroy Free Pouch, their pouches will be gone and your pouches will be gone. If anybody's out there and they've got pouches, they'll be gone. But if let's say that nobody's in the mines and there are pouches on the ground if we go to the mines now and look the pouches will still be there so any loaded chunk is affected again wacky destroy free is anything that is free it's not in your hands it's not in your bag it's not on your back it's not in your lockbox so things that are on the ground things that are that are maybe in the air or something like that Let's move on to Wacky Destroy All. And remember, Wacky Destroy All is very dangerous and you should use it when you know it's it's safe. So if you like you have players online and you're trying to destroy something, it's probably not a good idea to do this when players are online. You would want to do Wacky Destroy All when maybe somebody put too many items in the market or somebody put some items in the market and then threw a ton of coins in there uh, taking up space so you could you could destroy that item so wacky destroy all is going to be different in the fact that it will destroy all versions of that item that are loaded anywhere so anywhere that they are loaded so let's say for example I have sticks here and I have them in my bag so I'm going to try a few different things. I'm going to put sticks right here. There's a stick there. There's sticks here. And they are in my bag. They're right here. And watch this. Okay. So think about this. If they're in my bag, they're not loaded. Because my bag is closed right now. So if I do Wacky Destroy All... Stick. Watch this. One, two, three. So, I had a torch. My torch is gone. There was a stick here. That's gone. This pouch is now empty. These sticks are gone. But if I look on my back, my sticks are still here. So, watch this. I can... I have a pouch with one stick, so I can just pull it out. All right, so that's Wacky Destroy All. Another thing that could be very dangerous is doing Wacky Destroy All or Wacky Destroy Free on bags. So if you have players online, don't destroy bags. A, a pro tip would be spawn in a wooden net. It's just that, wooden net, one word. It comes out, put the net, put the bag in the net, and delete the wooden net because it's not likely that people are going to have wooden nets on the ground but it is likely that they'll have their bags on the ground or if you have wacky destroy all and they have bags in their back they're all gone don't use wacky destroy all unless you really have to we're going to talk about set stat and modify stat and why they're different so set stat is generally considered permanent while modify stat is based on a timer so some of the set stat things are permanent such as messing with our health or uh well let's just talk about health all right but generally when we do set stat it's kind of like messing with our base stat until we log off until we die and we're not revived um until we use the televator or the customization area. So if we do any of those things, it'll reset back to the base value. Now, I, I don't really know a better way to explain it other than like, like for example, if I do speed six, um, it's an interval. It's, it's 
we'll, we'll, we'll see it in a minute. So let's say that I want to be faster. So what I could do is player set stat. Now we can do set stat as one word or with a dash. It doesn't matter in this case. And then the username. And then the stat that we're going to be messing with. Now there are a list of stats that we can change. So don't try to get creative. Use the list. So if you don't want to get hurt, it's damage protection. Resistance isn't a stat, okay? So like let's stick with the list. So speed and then I want 6. For me, this is what I do every time I'm on the server, so I'm not too fast for the players. I'm not too fast to cause too much lag, and it's kind of a comfortable speed. So player set stat, my name, speed, and six. And this is what it looks like. All right, so this is speed six. So I'm used to like running around in this, but you will see that it takes a while for things to, to load in, like those rocks, but it's a pretty comfortable speed. I wouldn't recommend giving every player on your server too much speed at one time uh, because they can do things like visual glitch. They can run in, grab items from players, even though they're on their back or stuff like that. So be careful with it. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not glowing or anything like that because that is modify stat. And we're going to talk about that next. So right now my speed is six and I want to go slower. How do I do that? Well. I can do player kill, that's one way, um, or I can just come right over here, I can go in here, and I can run out. Okay, and now that I'm out, my speed is default. So. Let's move on and we're going to talk about modify stat. Okay, so before I talked about set stat and modify stat being a little bit different, modify stat is kind of like a multiplier. There might be a better way to explain it, but this is the way that I, I like to, to say. So like speed 6 with set stat is going to be slower than speed six with modify stat, because it's like six times faster. It might not be completely accurate, somebody can correct me, but it's it's a good foundation, okay? Like, like just follow me there. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do player modify dash stat, my name, and we're gonna do speed two, and we're gonna do the time and it's in seconds. So we're gonna do 100 seconds and then true at the end. And when we do that, I'm holding my hands out so we can see what that looks like. Look, I'm glowing blue, all right? And I've got like a little bit of swirl pattern here. Um, it does intensify. Now players, when they see you, you're gonna be glowing all over blue, but for some reason we, can, we cannot see our face glowing. I don't know why that is. All right, so this is speed two. So it's a little bit slower, just a little bit slower than that set stat speed six we had. All right. Now, if I, like I said, this is kind of like a multiplier. If I go through here and I refresh that a few times, so I'm clicking that refresh button a few times. Let's wait for it to spin up. Look at that. Look how intense that is. The particles and the, right? So I know that I'm going to be zooming like yeah, I ran that. Oh, I need to turn my camera off. I'm, I'm like way too fast. Well, I mean, I can manage it, but you know, it's, it's not comfortable speed. Let me show you something crazy. So let's do, for example, uh, player speed 200. I don't have damage protection on. <laughs> I'm not even going to set it. I've only got eight hearts. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> All right, watch this. All I'm gonna do is press down. Hold on, let me come over here. I'm gonna press down on the run button and then I'm not gonna let go. Look at this, look how far I went. I'm gonna probably die. Oh, I didn't die. I didn't even take damage, weird. Okay, so do you see that? That was speed 200 from town hall to here. It's very, very important that you remember, use this responsibly. Um, 
you can go too fast, or if you can give it to a player, they can go too fast, and they, they can just die. <laughs> um, if you have plots on your server, you don't want people to be able to enter plots and things like that, or get into bases. So just remember to be careful with, with these. Um, so just like before, if you want to, um, if you want this to, to wear off quicker, well, it's, you're going to have to do like player kill and not be revived. If you go into like the changing area and come out, you'll still have the blue particle effect, but you won't be fast anymore. So since I only did a hundred, it means a hundred seconds. It means I have to wait a hundred seconds and this will wear off. Um, so that's kind of how that works there. Let's talk about set stat when it concerns health. So set stat when it concerns health is going to be permanent as far as max health is concerned. So max health is what sets your hearts. When you start, the default is eight hearts. So the way that max health works is we're gonna do player set stat, it's a permanent stat, and then username. So player set stat, Obi-Wan Pierogi, right? And then max health. So four hearts is max health one. So let's do a little bit of basic math, okay? So one divided by four is 0.25. Okay, are you following me? So, one heart is 0.25, two hearts is 0.50, three hearts is 0.75, four hearts is one. So if I want eight hearts, I need max health two. If I want nine hearts, it's 2.25. So let's do that, so let's do my name, so we're going to player, set stat, my name, and then max health, 2.25, and then enter. All right, and let's see what happens. There we go. I've got an extra heart. Okay, so let's do one more thing. We're going to, we're going to mess around with max health. Remember how I said there are max stats, and maybe you've heard people talk about black hearts. Um, off the top of my head, I think max health is 32. That's the max. It doesn't matter if you go over this number. But let me show you what black hearts are. So if I run max health 32, we will see that my health transforms to where there's no pink bars. I don't even know how many hearts that I have. All I see is a black bar. This is black hearts. So. Am I invincible? No. Can I die? Yes. Is it really, really difficult to die? Yes. So I can fill this health with like player set stat, my name and health, and put a large number, or I could do modify as well, and that'll fill up. But that's what black hearts are. If you want to set this back, we just do player set stat, my name, max health, for example, two, and I'll have eight hearts. If it doesn't work, you might have to player kill or player kick for it to work. Okay, so we're inside Town Hall and we're looking at the bank. Or, as most people call them, the ATM. We call them the ATM because that's what ATT calls them. So we're going to be dealing with trade ATM commands. So, just like before with trade post with our mailbox, this is now trade ATM. So let's put our hand on here. Let's see how much money I have. All right, I'm very, very poor. I've got 20 coins and I wanna get more coins. So I don't know how you run your server. Maybe you allow your admins to spawn in coins and we're gonna do that right now. So it's very simple. It's trade ATM add username and then the amount of money you want to give that person so we're doing 500 and see it has added 500 to the total now what if i want to take 500 out of the atm so here's the weird the weird thing about trade atm so you're still going to do trade atm and you're still going to do add i know it's weird okay so you're going to do trade, ATM add, 
username and then minus, in this case, 500. So I want to take out 500. And so there we go. Uh, what if I want to check the balance of somebody and they're, they don't even have to be online? We're going to do trade, ATM, get, and then the username. And then we will see uh, in Tavern how much money that player has. Okay, so let's talk about some quick moderation tools that are pretty self-explanatory that I don't really need to show a lot of. Um, the first one is going to be player kick. So if you want to kick somebody off of your server, now this is only temporary, it basically logs them out of the server. So just like when you when you use the orb and you do that, we've basically been kicked from the server. So it's, it's, it's essentially that. So it's nothing too dangerous. Um, you know, this is something that I use if I'm trying to warn somebody and they're not listening, or maybe they went AFK or they logged out by pressing the power button on their headset and they're just frozen. I use player kick. It's very, very simple. It's just player, kick, and then the username. Like I said before, if there's a space in their name, then just put quotes around their name. And that's it. Player, space, kick, space, username. And they are kicked. And they can log back on. No issues. Okay. Um, let's say that you want to send a message. Maybe you're just playing around. Um, or maybe you have some stats and you want to reset your stats. You can do player kill. It's the same thing as before. Player kill username and that's it it's just as simple as that okay so let's talk about banning let's say that we need to ban somebody from our server I say that it's always best to do it through tavern and through console by typing in a command there is another way you can click on the player's name click on the three dots and click ban and it'll ban them I'm not sure if this is true, but from what I've heard, that ban only lasts one year. Not sure if that's true, just what I've heard. But let's do it a different way. Let's do a command. So if we have the player's name, that's always very important. We're going to need that, of course. And so what we're going to type in the command is bans from server username. So look again. So bans space from dash server. It's very specific. And then the username. After that, we're going to have the time in hours. I always recommend typing the number nine seven times. Sometimes if you do more or too many, it doesn't quite work. Um, I just do nine seven times. Okay. And then after that, you're going to put the reason in quotes. Now, the reason is for you. The user doesn't see this. This is if you have, for example, Town Watchman on your server, which I recommend that you have. If you're going to open up console commands, you want to have something like Town Watchman so you can look at the commands that are being run on your server. So this is for you. This is for you to go back later and see why was this person banned. Okay, so we're going to do bans space from dash server username, the number nine, seven times, and then quote the reason. So um, refused to change from invisible skin, unquote, enter, and now it'll run. Okay, so let's say that this player, they feel really sorry and they want to appeal. How do we unban them? It's really simple. In Tavern, go to the Members tab, click on that, and search for their name in the Ban section. So Members, and then Bans. There's this weird thing about Tavern that it's like case sensitive, so it's really important if you know the case of the name. So if it's a, a, a big 
letter A, it needs to be big letter A. Um, type in like the first few letters and you should see the name. And when you see the name on the three dots, click it and you can remove band. And then go up to add members, click it, and then you can invite them back to your server and they can join. So, uh, I hope that helps. All right, so if we look right there, the climbing tower is way back that way, right? Or way back that way. How do I get there quickly? Well, I can give myself set stat or modify stat, but nah, I want to teleport there. Or maybe I want to teleport someone there. How do we do that? So we could do two different ways, player teleport or player TP. I recommend player TP because it's shorter, okay? So player, TP, and then the person you want to teleport. So in this situation, I want to teleport myself and then the location. So the location could be another player. Um, or there's a list of places where we can teleport to. So let's say that I want to go to the first checkpoint of the climbing tower. So I would do player, TP, my name, and then tower CP1. And here I am. So I can activate this and let's say I don't want to climb. I could do that all over again. So I'm looking into my console and then I'm going to do tower CP2. And there I am. And in fact, while we're here, let's talk about one thing. If somebody needs to unlock climbing, there is a command for it, but I can't find one that works. So if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But generally, I just teleport somebody to each level of the climbing tower. Now, my server doesn't allow that, but, you know, let's say that I wanted to do that. And there you go. Look, I've unlocked climbing on this account, on this server. So, that's teleporting. Okay. Now, let's say that I want to teleport to a very specific coordinate. Well... Unfortunately, you kind of can't. You can, but you can't. You, you need to know the coordinate first. And that's kind of the tricky part. So if you know the coordinate, then we can do it. If you don't know the coordinate, then you're not going to be able to do it. So let's say that I want to be able to come back to this specific location. But we're going to need to get our current location and we'll do that by typing in player detailed and then my name and then we will get like a, a long list of things to look at so at the top we're gonna see that we're gonna see my position and when we look at my position, we need that X, Y, and Z coordinate, but we need to understand that for some reason it spaces it out all weird. Uh, we don't want those spaces. We want these numbers all together. So what we're gonna type in here now is player set home, set dash home, and then username, and then that coordinate. And then we're gonna hit enter on that. And that is successful. So, I'm going to teleport back to spawn by typing in player TP and then my username. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to... Alright, and that's all I did. I did player... Oh, I also set the time today. <laughs> so, I did player uh, TP and then username and I came to spawn. It's very important to understand that if you have these things activated, like the campsites, um, those definitely will mess with your home point, and these would definitely mess with your set home. I don't use the campsites at all. 
Um, so if you've got Cat Boy, don't use the campsites. If you're going to mess with your set home or anything like that, don't use the campsites. They're more trouble than they're worth as as an owner or an admin on a server. Um, so that's, that's, you know, anyway. So remember, we set our home to that location. So how do we get back to that location? We're going to go player, TP, our name, and then the word home. And we're back here. So if I were to... Oh, I've got black hearts, don't I? If I were to die... See, I've got black hearts, and I'm not dying. I'm not even taking damage. Why am I not? I don't know why I'm not taking damage. But I'm going to do player kill. And... There we go. Alright, so we've got Bob here. And I'm going to take Bob. And I'm going to give him a big kiss. That was kind of cringy. I'm going to keep it, though. You can laugh late at me later. <laughs> And let's look at this. I've now spawned here. This is my new home. So to get back to spawn, um, like I said, we're going to do player TP and then our name and then enter. We're going to go back there. And so if I ever want to come back here, we need to set our home here. So you... You do all that again. Player, detailed, your name, get those first three coordinates, take out the spaces, right? And then set your home here. And that's that's how we get that working. We can also teleport people to us. Now, I'm on this server all alone. Nobody even knows this server exists. So if I wanted to teleport somebody to me, it's the same way we did before. We would do player TP, the name of the person you want to teleport. So usually it's ourselves, but in this case, I want to teleport someone else to me or to a location. So I could do player TP, the person I want to teleport, and then the location, just like before. So if I want them to come to me, then I could do player TP, their name, and then my name. And they'll, they'll teleport like a meter or two meters in front of me. And that's how that works. All right. Before we conclude, let's talk about this thing right here. The settings board. If you are an admin or an owner of a server, turn it off. Don't use it. If you know how to use console, don't be lazy. Don't use this. You can change these settings in console. You just got to learn how to do it. The other thing too is, if you turn this on and a player walks into the area, they can sometimes hit buttons without them even knowing this is here. And it can sometimes be a problem because they can do things like fill the community boxes. You don't want that. Well, on some servers, you don't want that. Um, so anything that you know how to do in... Anything that you can do here, you can do... Um, with console commands. Turn this off. Don't use it. It's not great. It's not a great tool at all, especially when people can make changes and you will not see who did it. Okay. So, let's turn on this right here while I rock around. I think that gives everybody a pretty good understanding of what to do and maybe what not to do when it comes to commands. This is just a foundation. If you want a more detailed explanation of commands, or if there's something that I should discuss that I didn't discuss at all, tell me below. If you have questions, you can put them in the, in the, in the comments below, but it's always better to take it to the ATT Discord and learn from those guys there. Um, check out some of the documentation, something that Hazy wrote, um, or one of the other people out there have written, okay? So, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya.